It seems a bit repetitive to say again that Christmas this year does not feel the same. In fact, it's become slightly annoying to hear people saying that, even a jarring note from our government and the media when they tell us that things are different this year and tell us what an extraordinary year it's been. We all know that. But I think there's a very important reason for us as Christians why Christmas might feel a bit difficult for us to celebrate this year. And that's because the whole message of Christmas, the joy of the incarnation, that God became man for the salvation of souls, that message is a little bit at odds with everything we've been told this year. All year long, we've been told to keep a distance, to maintain social distancing, to refrain from embracing each other, to stay away from each other. The joyous and exciting message of Christmas is the complete opposite of that. God breaks through our fears, our worries, our vanity and our pride and becomes for us a baby, for you and for me. And what does a baby need, aside from food and shelter? A baby needs to be cuddled, to be embraced, to be loved. Perhaps this is a reason why it's difficult to really take to heart the message of Christmas this year because the constant message from around us is to stay away, to not get close. The message of Christmas is that God comes near to us, that he wants to be with us, to remain with us, that God is with us, is the joy and the wonder of Christmas. If we allow it, again and again, the beauty of the gospel touches our hearts, a beauty that is the splendour of truth. Again and again it astonishes us that God makes himself a child so that we may love him, so that we may dare to love him. And as a child trustingly lets himself be taken in our arms, so God seeks to embrace us in his divinity at Christmas. It is as if God were saying to us, I know that my glory frightens you, and that you are trying to assert yourself in the face of my grandeur. So now I come to you as a child, so that you can accept me and love me. That's at the heart of what Christmas says to us, to come close to God as God comes to us. It leaves behind that message of keeping apart, of staying away, as important as that's been for us this year. It isn't the message of Christmas. Even though we mark this Christmas at a distance from our loved ones, far away perhaps from our family and friends, Christmas is still this beautiful moment where we rejoice that God is with us. And there is no power in heaven and earth can take away his overwhelming love in the incarnation of his Son. That at Christmas we celebrate the truth of Jesus Christ, true God and true man. And that's at the heart of salvation. And if we don't get this right, nothing about Christianity makes sense. Because God comes to us. God is with us. True God and true man in the incarnation. And we rejoice in that at Christmas. Again, the message of this year has been that we're not allowed to welcome people into our homes. Well, perhaps how incredible that it echoes the remark of the Christmas gospel, that there was no room for them at the inn. Inevitably, the question arises, what would happen if Mary and Joseph were to knock at my door today? Would there be room for them? St. John, at the beginning of his account of the gospel, takes up this seemingly chance comment about the lack of room at the inn which drove the Holy Family into the stable. He explores it in greater depth and arrives at the heart of the matter when he writes, he came to his own home and his own people received him not. So despite the health warnings and concerns, we still need to find room in our homes for God. Do we really have room for God when he seeks to enter under our roof? Do we have time and space for him? Do we not actually turn away from God himself when we fail to welcome others, 
to seek a place for all those in need. Despite the difficulties we face, it should never be said of any of us that we could not find room for them in the inn. This year, of course, has challenged us to find different ways of helping others, of seeking to help those in need. And throughout this year, we've all witnessed many remarkable moments where people have reached out in kindness to others. One remarkable moment I remember was visiting a dying mother on the ward in hospital that catered for people dying of the COVID virus. Sadly, her two children were vulnerable to the virus and weren't allowed in the hospital ward. The nurses arranged for her bed to be moved to a room with a window overlooking the car park. Her two children could see her from there. And one of the nurses had them on the telephone whilst I said prayers with the mother and gave her the last rites. For me, it was a moment of complete tender goodness on the part of the ward staff as they seek to help that woman and her children in that most important moment as she prepared to leave this life for eternity. Perhaps the greatest reminder of this year then has been the truth that one day we will all die. And it's a truth perhaps that we don't like to face, particularly at Christmas. Who wants to think about dying at Christmas? And yet, when we look at the wood of the crib, it's but a foreshadowing of the will of the cross. The babe born at Bethlehem becomes the man who dies for us, for our salvation. And that is the greatest kindness that God gives to the world. The greatest moment of love that he allows his son, the babe born at Bethlehem, to become the man who will die for our sins. And that's how much we matter to God, that God allowed his only begotten son to die for us, for you and me, instead of us, so that we might see God. And so throughout this year, there has been these great moments of good. But sadly as well, there have been moments where we've seen people panic and be afraid, people truly paralysed by fear. St Augustine tells us that God made us to make the times, not the times to make us. We are the subjects of history, not its objects. Unless we make the times better with the light of Jesus Christ, then the times will make us worse with their darkness. And to do that, then, we need to rejoice in what Christmas truly means. The birth of salvation, the coming of hope into the world. And hope is perhaps one of those forgotten virtues that we all need to rediscover as we face a coming year. What threatens hope most of all are not the great tragedies and difficulties that people have experienced this year. What threatens hope is the soft, subtle despair that can creep into our lives and rob us of the exalted good that God wants for us. The problem for us is that we hope for too little. We've settled for too little. We've forgotten to hope for greatness. We've forgotten that the babe at Bethlehem offers us the chance of salvation. We've lost sight of God's love given to us in that babe, the love of God manifest in his son that fills the world with hope. And it's a hope we have to hold on to. In the Christmas Gospel, we hear that after the angels had departed, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened. A holy curiosity impelled the shepherds to see the child in the manger. We should be impelled always to come home to God, to come home to Jesus Christ, because for us, the true Bethlehem, the real Bethlehem, are the churches that we have in our communities, the places where we can go through the door and come to the tabernacle, to the abiding presence of Jesus Christ, that the crib which goes up at Christmas, the real crib, the true crib, aren't the statues and, and, the, and the ox and the axe and the cattle. The real crib for us is the tabernacle wherein dwells Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul and divinity in the great gift of our Eucharistic Lord. And so at Christmas we should remember never to neglect to come back to church, to come back to the Lord. 
I know that so many people are fearful, so many people worried about going outside. Well, when you feel ready and when you overcome that, know that the door will open, that the Lord is there waiting for us, longing for us, just as the shepherds hastened to Bethlehem to see the Lord. So we should remember to hasten home to church, hasten home to the Blessed Sacrament, come home to Mass, where we can receive him, where we come to the bread of life. Remember that every altar in every Catholic church is the crib where the Lord comes to us again, where we come to hasten to meet him like the shepherds, where we can have hope restored and remember again that we are loved. Scripture always tells us to have no fear. This year perhaps has filled so many people with fear and perhaps even with misery. But the Lord tells us, be not afraid. The temptation to fear, to anxiety, to depression, to fatigue, well, they could probably sum up the year so many people have had. What does the Lord say to us? The Lord doesn't say anything. The Lord comes to us. He comes to us as a baby. That's his answer. To treasure the gift of himself in his son that we rejoice in at Christmas. So now as we celebrate Christmas joy, as we rejoice in the birth of our Saviour, let us hasten to come to the Lord, to welcome him. Let us remember to find room for him at the inn in our lives. And let us know that he is always near us. That as much as this message this year has been stay away, it's a message the Lord disregards completely and comes to us. So may the Lord bless you this Christmas time. On behalf of all the confreres, the priests and brothers of St Philip's Priory, we assure you of our love and our prayers this Christmas time. And I would like to just end this little sermon today by paying tribute to them. I know that I live with a good community. I'm, I'm blessed to have good confreres. But this year I've seen them respond to terrible situations with kindness and with compassion and with love. And it's been humbling to see. So thank God for them and thank God for their witness. Thank you to all those who have supported us as well with their prayers and with their help. And know that we've been truly touched by the remarkable kindness so many people have shown to each other and especially to us. But of course, this year for us, we remember our dear confrere Father Caddock, who sadly died in May. We remember him always in our prayers, but this time when we're separated by so much, we're united in prayer. And so we ask for your prayers for our confrere. As we pray for all your loved ones who've died, please remember our confrere too. And so this Christmas time, remember the joyful message that Christ is born. Alleluia. Let us rejoice and take hope and face the future, confident that God is with us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.